An act of reconciliation. That's how Spain's acting Prime Minister, Pedro Sánchez, has described the exhumation today of the dictator Francisco Franco. His coffin was borne by family members after it was removed from the Valley of the Fallen, the basilica he built after winning the country's civil war in the 1930s and where he was buried in 1975. The coffin was then flown by helicopter to a cemetery just outside the Spanish capital where it will now lie in a more discreet grave alongside the body of his wife. While the families of his victims have described the move as long overdue, descendants of General Franco had challenged the exhumation in court. Speaking a short while ago, this is what the acting Prime Minister had to say. Modern Spain is the product of forgiveness, but it can't be the product of forgetfulness. Today, Spain is the opposite of what the Franco regime represented. Where there was repression and dictatorship, now there is freedom and democracy. Well, our reporter Jaime Velázquez is at El Pardo Cemetery on the outskirts of Madrid, Franco's new resting place. So hello to you there, Jaime. So uh, Pedro Sánchez, they're calling this an act of national reconciliation, but not everyone shares that view. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the, the Spanish society is, is divided over the exhumation of Francisco Franco, where for some of the Spanish people this is uh, an act of uh, probably uh, something that is going to bring some closure, especially for those victims of the regime. Pedro Sánchez uh, remembered them in, in his speech, but for, for some of them, those who have been here at the gates of the cemetery, the act, the exhumation of Franco, the removal of Franco from the Valley of the Fallen and, and, and his reburial here in El Pardo is some sort of an act of revenge. And uh, I think that uh, this is well, exactly what is going on in Spain. Probably we haven't had a dialogue or uh, around the Franco's legacy. In 1975, with the arrival of democracy, Spain decided to turn the page, but probably we haven't uh, had a proper, a proper discussion over the Franco's uh, legacy. And critics have also accused the government of using Franco's corpse to play politics ahead of next month's election. Well, uh, yes, a lot of uh, it's been uh, the Frank, uh, Pedro Sanchez has been criticized for the timing. But uh, as uh, Pedro Sanchez said, they have done it not a day before, not a day after. They were actually waiting for the Supreme Court rule uh, for the Supreme Court to decide whether or not they were uh, it was legal to remove or taken the body out out of the out of the valley of the, of the fallen. And uh, this is something that Pedro Sanchez had already pledge that he will take Franco out of the Valley of the Fallen and uh, this term uh, his term in office has been very very short and this is something that he had to do before the elections otherwise he would have passed this on to the next government and uh, we know know exactly how the elections are going to play out probably if he would have let, uh, left the task for the next government probably people would have said that uh, he is uh, actually using uh, the exhumation as a as an election an election um, an electoral um, argument in order to assure that he is going to be re-elected. I d we don't know exactly how is, this is going to play out. We know that the exhumation has actually uh, mobilized the far right uh, electorate, and we don't know exactly how the leftist electorate is going to react. So it seems opinion is divided in Spain. Uh, Jaime, thank you very much for that. Well, hundreds of thousands of Spaniards died during Franco's rule. Many of them were buried in mass graves. Our reporter, Carlos Marlasca, spoke to some of the relatives of those victims who are still fighting to recover those remains and to ensure that they too are remembered. Carmen found the remains of her relative in a mass grave. She was helped after reading a book that tells the story of the atrocities committed during the Franco era between 1936 and 1975 in the Spanish province of Soria. His mother's cousin, Adolfo Morales, was one of the victims. 
He was a member of the Socialist Youth. He was 26 years old. He was arrested a few days after the uprising with other comrades in Soria. He was taken to the Almasen prison and then one day he was taken with a comrade to La Riva del Escalote and executed. In Spain, it's estimated that more than 100,000 people disappeared during Franco's regime. The Ministry of Justice says it is likely that only the remains of around 25,000 will ever be recovered. Although some mass graves have been excavated, much work remains to be done. These maps, for example, haven't been updated since 2011 due to a lack of funds for the historical memory law which ensures the victims will never be forgotten. The Association Memory and Dignity, winner of the National Human Rights Award, makes up for the lack of cash. It alerted Carmen of the possible find of Adolfo's remains. When someone comes to the association, they usually have a clear idea that they have a missing or murdered relative, and we activate a protocol that involves many people and a lot of work, usually years, and that includes searching archives, requesting permits, going to towns, talking to people, trying to find the location of graves, and all the prospects and exhumation work. Carmen is waiting for DNA evidence to confirm the remains found are those of her relative. The two graves in which Adolfo and three other men were found were the first to be opened since the government's decree that Francisco Franco remains will be exhumed and moved to a municipal cemetery. On one hand, one is excited to think that I have found a relative that can be taken to a dignified place, and on the other hand, there is a deep thought, sadness and anger that there are still many bodies in this situation across the country. Associations and families will continue seeking ways to heal the wounds caused by actions carried out in the name of the former dictator. It's not just a matter of recovering the bodies. Many of the victims buried in mass graves were tried and convicted by a Franco's regime court. Those sentences have never been overturned, so from a legal point of view, they are still delinquents. Their families are waiting for their memory to be repaired. From Soria, Carlos Marlaska for Euro